Okay, I'm over here. Come on over. I'm a cameraman. He's in town now, so I needed to use him tonight. Um, I'm going to do my video. This is my second one, and I'm going to start doing them, I think, on every Monday. And um, I'm looking for a name for my videos, so if anybody can think of a name um, that I should call my little segment, please um, message me or send it on my Instagram post. Scoot, and scoot. I'm going to pick um, a name, and the one that I choose will get a fat quarter bundle from me. Uh, back order bundle of my choice and um, so think about something that I can call myself well something nice okay and okay so I'm gonna talk <laughs> preferably something nice okay so I'm gonna talk about look down some of these things um, and questions that you guys have um, the first up is thread okay back up here um, <laughs> I don't really care what kind of thread I use there's a lot of thread out there. There's a lot of expensive thread out there. I go to Joann's and I buy this thread and it's cheap. It lasts forever. It works great in my bobbin and it doesn't cause a lot of lint in my bobbin. I was a big fan of the pre-wound bobbins, but they cause a lot of lint. So um, this is just a uh, mercerized cotton and you can get it at Joann's. Coates and Clark makes it. I buy it like when it's on sale and get a, several of them. Um, somebody asked about what I do for arthritis pain. And funny you should ask that because one time um, Hunka and I were gone on a trip and I embroidered for like seven days in a row and my hand was killing me from arthritis um, right here in my hand. And so, <laughs> so we went and bought the Bengay and I got the extra ultra strength and it helps my the pain went away and I'm telling the pain was so bad I couldn't stand it but this helps and it doesn't stink um, the smell goes away uh, so that's my thing for arthritis because I can't give up my sewing right next okay back back a ruler um, a quarter inch this I like these little rulers they're cheap they're inexpensive there's all kinds of rulers again but um, I like to have a quarter inch mark on my ruler because when I'm measuring stuff and I want to look at a quarter inch or measure my quarter inch, some rulers only go to the half inch first and there's no visible mark of quarter inch or eighth inch for that matter. And I like this ruler. It's a cheap one. I don't even know where I got it from. But um, Creative Goods also makes these rulers and they have the quarter inch, the half inch, eighth of an inch. And you can see it clearly when you're marking. So uh, that's something I look for. Some of the rulers uh, that are out there, you can't see the markings clear and they're orange and they're different colors and it's kind of distracting. So I make sure that um, when I get a ruler that it's visible and clear when you're doing your marking and drawing. My um, students that are taking my beginner class, that's one thing I tell them is, um, I'm teaching them is the eighth inch, the quarter inch, and the ruler really matters. One thing they did, all of them, was went and bought a ruler that's like 30 inches long. That didn't work out so well. Um, you don't need the big jumbo rulers. You can get an 18 and a half inch ruler, um, eight and a half, you know, length. So um, anyway, you don't need a big giant ruler. You don't need an expensive ruler. Um, let me see my seam ripper. I like the Clover seam ripper. I've used this seam ripper forever. It's um, one thing I don't think people know is that seam rippers go dull and you have to get a new seam ripper. If you've had a seam ripper for a long time, try to buy a new one and check it out and see what a difference it makes. I thought you could just keep this forever and keep using it. And then I opened up a new seam ripper and started using it. And it's like a new sharp pair of scissors. So get a new seam ripper if you've had it forever. Um, the pencil, I think we talked about last time, but this pencil I love. It comes with refillable lead. There's a lot of pencils out there. You can, you know, really use whatever you want, but I like this. It has a nice tip on it for marking. Uh, if, you're, if you are marking your quarter inch. It's pretty. Okay. So, um, let's see what else. Um, okay. Scissors. I love all kinds of scissors. I'm going to do a segment just on scissors. Don't tell anybody, okay, because I don't want them copying me. But I'm going to do a segment on scissors coming up. You know, I love them. I collect them. I have tons of scissors. So I'm going to kind of go through them and, and talk about scissors. 
but I just got these in my Etsy store and I think they're, they're so darn cute and they're an aqua and they have this little cover on them and they're sharp, sharp, sharp. And they even have a fingernail file if you want to file your fingernails. But they got this little cover that you can put back on it and it stays with it so you don't lose it and they're aqua color. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about, I hope this isn't too long, but I'm gonna talk about um, how I, how I um, do my machine quilting on my little projects. I like doing little projects myself. I don't like doing the big quilts myself, but um, these little ones, I, I'm gonna show you how I do them. I use this spray based, and again, I get this at Joann's, and I use my coupon because the stuff is not cheap and I use a lot of it. So it's, um, there's a lot of brands, but this is Taylor Quilt Basting Spray and it works great. So it, be, be careful of the overspray because it is sticky if it gets overspray because it gets on my rulers and then I can't read them. So be careful. So what I do first is, um, down, you look down. I cut the back piece, you know, the size that I need to cover the front. And then I cut a piece of batting to go in there and I use warm and white that's what I use on everything and then I do my top okay I flip them over and then just make sure that it's all pressed and everything is nice and smooth and then I use this and I give it a couple shakes and I'm gonna just spray a little bit but I lift this one up like that and I just give it a little spray I'm not gonna spray a lot because it'll over spray but a little bit of spray and you don't need a lot really so I lay this side back down, smooth it out, and that's on there. And then I flip it and I do the other half. And that kind of keeps it straight and all smooth. And then I do this and give it another little squirt and smooth it out. And then I flip this upside down. And I know it's the right size. I've measured, I checked it twice. I pull this up, same thing as I did on the front, and give it a little squirt. And then I get out all the threads and smooth that down. Okay, so that's all smooth. Same thing, I'm gonna rotate it again and then spray the back side and then put it down. And you can spray a little more if you want, but it's really not necessary, it stays. And so that's, now it's all stuck together and it's ready for quilting. Um, now the machine quilting that I do, uh, I can either do quarter inch um, in the seams along here, or I go on the diagonal sometimes. And when I do that, I use this pen, the Frixon pens. Some people don't like them. They say the color, the ink comes back, but if you iron, it goes away. I've never had a problem with it not going away and staying away. But I use this pen and then I'll just do um, start anywhere on here. I'm not picky about where I start, but I try to get a diagonal and line up. This is ruler's not long enough, but I line up like from this point over to this corner. And again, I don't worry about if it's not, you know, here to there, wherever. As long as you continue marking it in the same exact measurement across. So let's say I'm doing it right here and I mark right here. Then I'm gonna go and measure about a half an inch over. Oh, uh-oh, and then mark again. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time. I'll come back and um, talk more about this soon. Let me know what your suggestions are for the name and um, we'll go from there. Thank you, bye.